So today, we've got something interesting to talk about. A lot of people are panicking when they see these giant hornets in the United States. They see something like this and immediately they think it's the murder hornet. That's what the media has labeled them. But the murder hornet applies to the Asian giant hornet. Where have those things been found? Only a few specimens in Washington state. People are keeping an eye on them. They're going to track them. We're going to deal with them if they're here. But the Asian giant hornet is not found all over the United States. And I think most likely people are finding this hornet right here. It's the European hornet. That's all it is. Vespa Crabro. These things are found all over the United States. They're not new. They didn't just show up here. They've been here since the 1800s. And they were brought in. Now their numbers are on the rise. These are yellow jackets. Yellow jackets, in my opinion, far more of a pest than the European hornets are, even though they're much smaller. These things move around in big gangs. This time of year, it is September the 21st, by the way. And this time of year, the numbers are high. Food resources are scarce. So what's that mean? They're going to be pests to people. They're also going to be pinging on your honeybee hives and trying to get in those entrances. These nice big European hornets may nab a honeybee or two. But don't panic. They're not going to kill and eat every bee out of a hive the way the Asian giant hornets would. So we get asked a lot of questions about these. Some people commented and sent me messages saying, go check out this video. They just found the Asian giant murder hornet. Well, thanks to the media. By calling it a murder hornet, everybody's panicked. Not everybody, obviously, those who understand the differences will be calm. The purpose of this video will be to help you understand what they are and what the threat really is. And the European hornet, as big as it is, and uh, as striking as they are to look at, are really considered gentle giants. I would much rather have these around than bald face hornets, which I'm going to show you later in this video. Or the yellow jackets, which make up for, you know, their lack of size with pure numbers. You can be outside sipping your cup of coffee, and I've actually sipped in a yellow jacket and spit it right back out because they're so bold, they're so hungry. They zip in, they land on your food, they get on your hot dogs. They want food just like every other insect. And this time of year, their numbers are high, as I mentioned before, and the resources are low, so they're going to rob each other. They're just, there's going to be conflicts. How did they end up here at these drinkers? Well, I put out spirulina, which is uh, an algae that comes in dry powder form, and I put it in sugar syrup, and I was trying to find out if honeybees would come to it because it's supposed to be extremely healthy for their bee gut, the microbiome. And instead, what happened? One or two honeybees stopped by, but all of the other visitors were hornets and wasps. So I have this nice big European hornet here to look at. There are several zipping around. You can hear them in the audio. And uh, they have a very low pitch because they fly with their wings beating at a much lower frequency than other wasps and hornets do. How many hornets are in the United States right now established? Just one. They're in the wasp family, Vespas, but these are hornets, and there's only one species of hornet established in the United States. Now, other people want me to update my other videos and say that the European hornet is not the largest hornet in the United States anymore because the Asian giant hornets, the murder hornets, are here. Well, they're not established. They haven't found any of their nests yet, but they have found specimens, as I mentioned before. If you think you have found a true Asian giant hornet, you contact your Department of Agriculture. They're going to want to know. There are also inflated claims about how large the ones are that people find. They say they're as large as their finger, three inches long. If you have something like that, that's a record even for the Asian giant hornet. European hornets, they max out at about 35 millimeters. They're not that big, really. They're just so much bigger than the other flying insects that we see. There are some interesting facts about them though. They can fly and hunt in daytime or nighttime. They're also attracted to light, so if you leave a outside security light on or something like that, 
this time of year, you might actually see them hovering around those lights because they're going to nab the moths and other insects that also are attracted to those lights. The yellow jackets, they fly during the daytime, you find them in the ground. That's the other thing. Where would you find their nests? So the nests of the European hornets is going to be shielded. It's going to be covered somewhere. They do have a bad habit of moving into houses and cavities. They build a paper nest, just like paper wasps do, but it's usually sheltered inside another space. So they could be in an old abandoned building. They could be in the hollow of a tree. And uh, if you get to their nest site, that's the place where you don't want to mess with them because they will be defensive. Other people spread around sensational information. Like if you get stung by one of these things, you are dead. That's it. Not really the case. In fact, the pain from a sting of one of these European hornets is right on par with a honeybee. They have a nice big stinger, but uh, I'm filming this less than 10 inches away. They don't care that I'm here. They're cool to look at. And uh, also, why are they letting me get so close? Even this yellow jacket that's drinking here. Spirulina with sugar syrup. That's all they're doing. How much spirulina did I put in that? Four teaspoons per quart. And what's interesting too is photographically it worked out because it made the sugar syrup so dark that it made the surface nice and reflective. So I took advantage of that. Got out there with my camera. A lot of people ask what kind of equipment I use to make these videos. Well, you'd be disappointed in this one because I cobbled together the lens system for this, so you can't just go out and buy one. Here the yellow jacket is sitting right on that water, and it's pretty interesting. The surface tension, this is syrupy. You'd think they get stuck, but watch this one just helicopter across the surface there until it gets to the edge. And then off she goes. And that's likely a yellow jacket queen, by the way. The close-ups of these European hornets are very interesting because it gives us a chance to look at their eyes. They have five eyes, so do bees. Two large compound eyes, you can see, and look at the three simple eyes, the acella, that are in the middle. Also, you can tell the difference between male and female by the number of segments in their antenna. There are lots of people watching my YouTube, so we'll be happy to tell you the specifics of that. But these are armor-plated giants. And the other thing I want you to look at is, look at their legs. First of all, they have the clear pads at the tips of their feet, which allow them to climb on smooth surfaces. But the spikes that you see, about what we would call the knee, you see the spikes sticking out, it looks like a single spike from the profile, but they're actually in a V-shape. There are two spikes on each leg, and they face each other so that when they grab something, they get a really good grip by stabbing those spikes into it. Do these things eat meat? No, they don't. What they do is they grab things, including honeybees. Their mandibles are so powerful, they make very short work of a honeybee or even another wasp. They clip off the head and the abdomen. They keep the thorax, which is where the wings are attached there. Why do you think they like that? Because that's where all the muscle is. That's where all the meat protein is. They're going to take that back to their developing larvae. And that's what eats the meat. See that narrow connection between the abdomen and the thorax? They can't swallow, digest, and eat meat, so they get syrup and nectar. And when they feed their developing larvae, the larvae produce a nectar that they drink, so that's a reward. Here's my lone honeybee has come to this spirulina loaded sugar syrup. One thing I want you to notice about the tongue of this honeybee, look how she's thrusting her tongue in and out. When the syrup is really thick and heavy, they use their tongue to sponge it up. If it's really thin syrup, then they don't thrust their tongue in and out. Instead, they just suck it up. They form a tube with the parts of their mandible, with their proboscis, I'm sorry. The mandibles are the dark brown pieces that are on the sides there holding the proboscis together to give it the shape it needs to draw that liquid up into the mouth and into the crop of this bee. So the honeybees were my target. Instead, I created a fantastic reservoir, a feeding station for all species of wasps and of course these hornets, which gave me an opportunity to photograph and video them and now share it with you so you get these close-up looks. So if someone has killed one of these, 
Hopefully they did. They're not just talking about it. And they say they have a murder hornet. You'll be able to send them this video and say, did it happen to look like this? Because 99.9% .9 of the time, they're mistaking the European hornet, Vespa Crabro, for the Asian giant hornet, which is Vespa Mandarina. It's cool to be able to watch them up close. I'm not wearing a bee suit here. I'm just sitting here looking at them. They don't care. Because they're not here for meat. They're not going to attack me. They don't bring down large prey like people. And they can eat your bees, as I mentioned before, but it's not worth going out and killing every hornet that you find because they are not the big harassers of your beehives. The yellow jackets are. So if you want to catch yellow jackets, green light, go ahead. When they come after your bees, uh, sometimes you're justified in putting out traps because it'll give relief to those fall colonies of bees, which, by the way, attack each other. So even bees are hard on bees this time of year. But the thing that's interesting is when I put out these samples of spirulina, S-P-I-R-U-L-I-N-A, with the sugar syrup, all the wasps and hornets were drawn to that and away from my honeybee apiary, which is 75 feet to the east of this location. So I got a great opportunity to photograph and video these specimens and at the same time did my apiary a favor by drawing them off and now they don't have to defend against them. Can our honeybees defend themselves against these European hornets? They really can't. These hornets make such short work of a honeybee. They fly in, they land on the landing board, they nab a bee, they fly away, they hang upside down, which is interesting, on a twig and they dispatch the bee and then they fly away home. So they don't do what other bee species in Asia can do where they ball the hornet and they kill the scout and they overheat it. Our bees just don't do that. The honeybees that I keep are the bee weaver bees and of course the Saskatras bees over the last year and a half. And they guard their entrances just fine. Yellow jackets are not having a good time around here this year. So they're not successful in getting after my bees. Now here you can see those spikes on the legs really clearly. Imagine the poor bug that gets nabbed by this hornet and spiked with those spikes just to hold them so they can fly away until they dispatch them with those mandibles. Some people have said that the spikes kill the specimen that they nabbed. That really doesn't work out that way. It's just a mechanism for hanging on and not releasing it. Look at the hind legs there and all the spikes on those. So they build their paper nests inside a cavity. If you find them in the nest, let somebody know. Even the European hornets are pretty defensive. You just close that off, guess what they're going to do? They're going to make another hole. If it's in the wall of your house, they'll end up inside. So they hunt at night. They hunt during the day. There's a lot of them around. I consider them gentle giants, and I much prefer them over the yellow jackets. Here we are back to the yellow jackets. Just look at them all. There's a lot of different subspecies, too. So it's not just all, all yellow jackets are not the same. But as I mentioned before, they're bold. You can be drinking your coffee as I was and come right up and land on it. Now here's my least favorite of the wasps, the bald-faced hornet. Now it's called a bald-faced hornet, but it's really just a wasp. It's not a true hornet. Are you ready for this? Dolicus buna maculata. And here they are all in a row. Yellow jacket first, bald-faced hornet, which is just a wasp second, and then the true hornet here in North America, the European hornet, largest of them all. And other people write and say, you said that was the largest of them all. Well, we have bigger where we live. There are bigger wasps. That's true. There are tarantula wasps. There's a cicada killer. Those are not hornets. Those are wasps. So it's really just getting into classification. We only have one true resident hornet now. And that is the European hornet we're showing here in the background. Bald-faced hornet in the foreground. Bald-faced hornets make a huge paper nest in a bush, in a tree. And you can wind up walking into that mess and getting stung as well. These are honeybees on their landing board. Nothing's getting in here. If you come across honeybees, please don't kill them. 
These are our pollinators. These are our honey makers. These are social. They get themselves through winter socially. They depend on one another to generate heat, to defend the hive. So a much nicer bee can make it just out of the pure numbers that they offer in defense of their colony. And that's the other thing. People have scared the public by saying we have a murder hornet and the response can be that they get insecticides and they spray every flying insect they come across purely out of fear. I highly recommend not using poisons. If you feel like you have to trap something, use a trap. Don't use poisons. We just don't know where that's going to go, in my opinion. So I'd much prefer that you trap and collect them that way and make sure that your trap is baited in such a way that honeybees don't go in there. So you want to put apple cider vinegar in there. You might want to put yeast in there. There are lots of recipes for traps if you have a hornet problem or a wasp problem. Yellow jackets, get them if you have a problem. Bald face hornets, green light on taking those out if they come after you because they are bad news. Now here in the foreground, is the male honeybee, probably the most harmless bee you'll ever come across. Great big eyes, super fuzzy body. Here we picked them up. There's 30 of them or more on the ground in front of this hive. Why? Because we're going into winter and the male bees aren't needed. They just chuck them out there. They can't bite you. They can't sting you. They have a little tiny tongue. They get fed by nurse bees and the nurse bees have stopped feeding the drones. So the male bees have seen their day. Do you think this one was lucky enough to mate with a virgin queen? No, because he's still alive. If he mated with a virgin queen, he would have disconnected from his reproductive organ and he'd be dead somewhere in a field. So instead, he's just left here on September the 21st, cast out of the hive, no longer being fed. He'll run out of energy and just die overnight. Ants will come and collect them. Maybe a skunk or two will come through and eat them. So when you see bees, don't hurt them. When you see the European hornet, please don't assume that it's the Asian giant murder hornet. They just aren't. Your chances of seeing an Asian giant hornet this year are slim to none. If you do though, if it doesn't look like this one, call your Department of Agriculture and report it. Catch a specimen. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting, and I hope you found the information for identifying hornets and wasps valuable. Have a great week.